Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Four railroad cars is two nineteenths of a train, not including the engine. How many cars does the train have? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so first things first, uh, you know, when we're dealing with a math or word problem, you always need to use the rule of three, okay? Now, what is the rule of three? Well, don't do anything until you read the problem at least three times. Now, of course, I've already read the problem a couple times uh, already, but when you read the problem, just don't kind of, you know, uh, do it in a half-hearted way. In other words, like, okay, this is, you know, four cars, two nineteens. I got it, I got it, I got it. That's not the point. The rule of three is you read the problem one time, get a sense of it, and then slowly read it again and let your brain kick in to come up with this strategy. And then the third time you read the problem, make sure you understand the question. Now, this is a pretty easy problem, but in more sophisticated or more complex uh, math problems, the question is not so clear. And if you don't understand the question, well, you're not going to understand what to do to solve the problem. Okay, so here, once we've already read the problem and we're like, okay, how many uh, cars does the train have? I got this information about uh, cars and not uh, some sort of fraction of this uh, train. Then, uh, you know, of course, I have these four cars. Like, how do I put this all together? Well, we're, what we're going to need to do is model this situation. And this is where math becomes kind of fun and creative because pe uh, different people can model this in a different way. And each way is perfectly fine as long as it makes sense to you and it would make sense to someone else. But in a situation like this, nothing beats a picture. A picture is worth a thousand words. So if you can draw a quick uh, sketch or diagram of, of the math problem that you're working on, that's always really, really a good starting point. Okay, so here is our train. Of course, we get to draw a little train as well. Matter of fact, I guess I can, should connect it right there. <laughs> so here we have four cars, right? So one, two, three, four. Here is our lovely engine, okay? And uh, these four cars represent two nineteenths of the total train. So let's just make sure we have this situation right. So four cars, okay, is two nineteenths of the train, and that doesn't include the engine. Okay, so let's go down here and make sure we have this right. Okay, so two nineteenths, uh, four cars, one, two, three, four. And of course, this uh, uh, you know train continues. Uh, these four cars represent uh, two nineteenths of the train, not including the engine. Okay, so how can we use this kind of uh, visualization of the problem to help us out? Well, the question is what? Well, the question is how many cars does the train have? Now, anytime you have a math problem and it's like how many, if you're looking for some sort of unknown value, uh, one of the best things you can do is use a variable to represent what you're looking for, okay? Because a variable is a number, okay? It represents a number. And if we assign this mystery number to represent uh, the answer to the question, how many cars does the train have? Well, it has X cars, okay? Well, uh, you know, we need to kind of formalize this, right? So let's go ahead and uh, depict it this way. So this car, uh, this train is gonna have X total cars. Okay, so hopefully I didn't uh, uh, stumble and bumble too much to explain that. And again, there's different ways you can model this situation. All right, now uh, this is effectively the problem, but what do we do here? Well, uh, we have a variable and we can answer this question here when you have a variable without setting up an equation. So we need to start thinking about how can we set up an equation? How can we pull all the information together such that we can uh, find the value of X? So let's go ahead and take the next step. And that is, of course, uh, assigning this variable in a kind of formal way. 
So when you are doing math word problems, uh, you always, again, want to be thinking in terms of who, is, who may uh, be reading your work. Now, you might be saying, well, no one's going to read my work because once I get done with this thing, I'll throw this in the trash. Well, listen, uh, you, there's, that's, a, that's you know, creating a bad habit. Okay? If you want to get better at math, you want to create good academic habits. So every time you do a prom, you should always try to do it to the best of your ability. And if, even if you are the only person that is going to read your work, you want to write things nice and clear and structured. And this kind of goes to that rule of three. Okay, You want to you know, take your time, understand what's going on, and then you want to start structuring the problem in a different, uh, uh, in a very logical manner. All right. So basically, you know, you could have a sketch, a model of what's going on. And at this point, uh, we're going to assign this variable X to equal the total amount of cars. All right. So once we've done that, then we want to uh, establish an equation, which of course I have right here. I'll explain this in one second. Then we want to solve the equation and then answer the question. All right. So you know, these math word problems, especially algebra word problems, generally have the same kind of flow, right? This is no different than telling a story. Uh, so, all right, so hopefully you get the main idea. Okay, so we're going to let x equal the total amount of cars. And now we can go ahead and write an equation bec because we know that 2 ninetieths, okay, 2 ninetieths of the total amount of cars is four cars, all right? So let's go back and double check this. It's so, okay, well, four cars is 2 19ths of the train. Well, how many cars is the train? Well, it's X cars, right? So 2 19ths of this number is four cars, right? So that makes sense to me and hopefully makes sense to you. So now we have a lovely equation. So 2 19ths of X is equal to four. And now what do we have to do? Well, we have to solve this equation and because we are using um, a variable and we constructed a basic equation, well, we need to know how to solve a basic linear equation with fractions. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve for x here. The easiest way to solve this equation, and if you don't know how to solve equations, I'll give you a couple of suggestions at the end of this video. But when you have a fraction in front of a variable like this, what we want to do is get a 1x. Now, let me go ahead and give you a quick example. If I have 2x is equal to 10, to solve for x, the object, the, the object here is to get x is equal to a number. All right, But I have 2x, so how can I get just x or 1x? Well, easy. I can divide both sides of the equation by 2. So the golden rule of algebra is whatever you do to one side of the equation, it's perfectly fine as long as you do it equally to the other side. So 2 divided by 2 is 1 or 1x. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay. So always be thinking when you're solving equations, how can I get that variable by itself? What do I need to do to one side? As long as I do it to the other side, I'm a-okay. All right. So when it comes to solving equations with fractions in front of the variable and the number in front of the variable, it's called a coefficient. So the easiest way to solve these type of equations is to flip the fraction upside down. So this is 2 19, so it'll be 19 over 2. And we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 19 over 2. Now, why is this the best way? Because 19 over 2 times 2 over 19, when I multiply fractions, again, when you multiply fractions, you're going to multiply the respective numerators by the respective denominators. You can see all this is going to be equal to 1, and that's what I want. Okay. So what do I have to do to 2 19ths in order for this to uh, be a 1? Well, just multiply it by 19 over 2, but i got to multiply the other side of the equation by 19 over 2 as well. Okay, so 4 times 19 over 2 is going to be 4 over 1 uh, times 19 over 2. 2 goes into 4, 2. 2 times 19 is 38, or 4 times 19. Get that number divided by 2. The answer is 38. Okay, so again, we have to be very careful on uh, what the question is asking is how many total cars. So you could write down 38 cars, and if, but if you weren't sure what your teacher was looking for, you could be like, well, 38 cars, well, that would be also 39 cars uh, plus the engine in total. Okay, so now if some of you are saying, well, all right, this was a kind of a slick way to uh, solve this problem, Mr. YouTube Math Man. And again, if you didn't um, solve this problem in this manner, no big deal, as long as you got it right, that's what counts. But eventually, if you 
uh, you know, are going to progress into mathematics, you're going to have to know some algebra, right? So always, you know, uh, use algebra when you can. It just makes everything easier. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.